Think of a number. No, literally, think of a number. Multiply that number times two. Add six to that number. Divide that number by two. Now subtract your original number. If you did the math correctly, you all would end up with the number three. Thinking creativity leading to innovation is where the world is going. We all start off with different numbers, different places, different life circumstances, but we're all headed into the core of the 21st century. When you think about the different locations and we're all ending up in the exact same place, it's quite exciting if you think about it. You see, we are no longer in the dawn of a new era. We are here. We are in the information age. If you understand that we are in the information age, that it is going to take critical thinking to sustain the era that we are in. You see, in the 20th century, the currency of the day was manual labor. But in the 21st century that we live in, the currency of the day is thinking. Now that we understand that the foundation is thinking, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are the cores of where we are going. In order for us to sustain, to maximize and optimize the opportunities that lie before us, we must use critical thinking as our foundation through the lens of creativity to deliver us to the innovations that are necessary that will bring us the unknown. You see, right now, we are prepared to go into the most powerful components of what we know today. But we must all use the same foundational rules. You see, STEM is more than just an acronym conjoined by academics, but it's more of, to its core, critical thinking, problem solving, trial and error experimentation. You see, STEM at its core has as its requisite some form of empiricism of or related to mathematics. And if you picked up your phone lately, you understand what I'm saying is true. You see, Francis Dower thought that thinking was more than just an option of choice of vacation or the clothes that we'll wear, or the food that we'll eat. Francis Dower says that the core of thinking is the art of the assessment of truth. And he gave five factors that gives us the foundation for assessing a truth if the claim is to be true or not when we are thinking critically. At the core of this five foundations, we have the APD, which is what he calls the absence of practical doubt. So let's say we're saying the grass is green. So the first factor we can measure in the art of thinking is to say, hmm, I can experience with my senses to see that the grass is green. Or let's say I can use the next claim that says, let's see if it's factual. Are there any experts that concur that grass is green? I'm going through the process of what he calls the art of assessing truth, at the core being unproblematic, which is what we need today in order for us to move forward into the information age. We're here, so we have to have the tools that are necessary 
in order to survive this new era. He says that what about if we have some kind of scientific background to measure if we can, if we can tell if grass is green? Or just use plain common sense. If there is an con overwhelming confirmation of la a large group of people who are knowledgeable and who are intelligent to know, yes, grass is green. So we have observational and intuitive. If I ponder and think, have I experienced this color before and does it make sense? These are the core components of what it takes to say, is grass green? And then I know, in the absence of practical doubt, grass is green. Believe it or not, these are the steps that we must take in order to overcome obstacles that we face in the 21st century. Not only do we need to think critically, but we also need to think creatively. They're not one without the other. You need creativity in order to balance out the facts. You see, the American Association for the Advancement of Science says the scientific enterprise must include creativity if we're going to have a scientifically literate society. It's part of their Project 2061. Think about this if you had a child and you set them in the middle of the floor with blocks. The child intuitively will pick up the blocks and begin to build. Creativity is a part of who we are. It's within us. But now, in this era of the information age, we must learn how to think critically through the lens of creativity to lead us to innovations. Innovation that we enjoy every day. The Fitbit. Some of us enjoy drones. There are innovations in this world that we, are, we don't even have a clue as to how important they are and how they will impact us in the age to come. Right now today, in Sweden, there is a manless convenience store. In Amsterdam, the Lloyd's headquarters is one of the world's most intelligent buildings. It, the building itself can control the temperature, the lights, the energy, the whole nine. In the last century, we put a man on the moon. In this century, we're attempting to put a man on Mars. There's a lot that goes into creativity with critical thinking that leads us to the innovations that sustains us today, but that will lead us to tomorrow. And we must do it together. You see, when we had the locomotive in 1804, the world was on its heels enjoying the speed of transportation. In Shanghai, China today, we have the maglev train. It's a magne magnetic train that runs on an electric magnet that literally levitates 10, meters above, 10 millimeters above the floor, which reduces friction. So it can achieve speeds up to 260 miles an hour. SpaceX is saying, let's go to 760 miles an hour with the new Hyperloop. This is the age in which we live. And critical thinking is going to sustain us in this era. The world is increasing its population at a phenomenal rate. But we've talked about transportation, but what about energy, defense, agriculture, and medicine? These are all areas that the world is inherently going to have challenges. And we need people, we need thinkers, we need people to get involved with helping to ease some of the pangs that go along with the changing of a new era. We're no longer using manual labor, now we have to use thinking. You know, as a chemistry professor, I hear my students say all the time, give me a number, give me the equation, show me the number. But if you're applying numbers without the context of what those number, numbers mean, if my students had the mic, they would tell you that I always say, in chemistry, the math tells the chemistry story. 
So when I'm thinking critically, I can understand what I am using the math for. You see, now is the time for us to begin to get on the train of critical thinking so that we can continue the age of information by creating new technologies, new inventions, new enterprises that will sustain us and to continue to enjoy the 21st century. You see, the United States Department of Labor Statistics Bureau says that 85% of new jobs are in STEM. The highest paid jobs, 80%. Fastest growing jobs are deeply involved with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And this is not just for science majors. Companies all over the world are seeking for people, whether you are in finance or marketing, to think critically, to solve problems, using 21st century skills that will propel an organization forward. You see, neuroplasticity is called the changing of the brain. It's the science. What if we were all engaged in increasing our brain capacity? Anyone can change at any time. And the more you engage in critical thinking, you are positioning yourself not only as an individual, but as part of your organization, a part of your business, your company. You're positioning yourself to receive the maximum benefits of what science, technology, engineering, and mathematics stand for, what critical thinking has to offer. You see, I can remember when I was in high school, I really, really got it. I saw science. My teacher, she was awesome, Carolyn Hanna. She would teach us the theories of physics, and then we'd go back into the lab that was part of our classroom, and then we would engage those very principles that she had just taught us. I saw it. That gave me the ideas, wow, chemistry is awesome. Physics, I love it. I have to do this for the rest of my life. Well, guess what? When it was time for me to graduate. My high school counselor, God bless her heart, Christine Mandenberg, I, she put me down for every program, every scholarship, and I went back to her and I, I went to her and I said, oh my gosh, Ms. Mandenberg, what do I owe you? How is it that I can repay you for all that you have done for me? She said so kindly, Karen, you don't owe me anything. Just pass it on. That's why I'm standing in front of you today. I owe my students. I owe Christine Mendenberg. I owe my parents. For the knowledge that I have gained in learning how science makes the world work. And I want other students to feel that the exact same exhilaration. The greatest reward that a teacher can receive is to see the light bulb go off. In chemistry, it's one big story. And I get to teach the story in different ways. But what about you if you're not in chemistry? What if you're in another field? In business, they call the value proposition. What is it that you're offering your customer, whether it's a product or a service? So you as an individual, what are you bringing to the table? What experience, what expertise? What thinking are you bringing to your organization to make it a more productive organization? What is your value proposition. Companies are looking for more than people who can just push a button or inquire of Siri or Alexa. We are the human operators. We are the facilitators. And if you can problem solve, if you can think critically, if you can answer questions, you will always be in demand. Because that's what the new technology is requiring of us to answer questions and to think critically. So in the classroom, 
I, it's my job as a teacher, and as the teachers who are listening or who are watching, it's your job to be the facilitator of learning and not the dictator of learning. So students have the opportunity to build in themselves the framework and to practice their thinking as an organization, as a company, to provide your employees with the opportunities to use their creative genius, to let the intellectual prowess, to let it out. So I challenge you today to stretch yourself beyond your contact list and start dialing phones from memory. Using mental math, learning a new language, taking a different route, allowing your mind the opportunity to grow and to think and to stretch and to go beyond what you know as an individual to create something different. The world is waiting for you to solve a problem. I call it the STEM matrix. It's going to take academia, businesses, and the community at large for us all to work together to solve the issues and to come up with the answers and the innovations that reveal the unknown to us. We are in the information age. As one of the greatest thinkers of the times and in history has said, the value of a college education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Think, create, innovate, STEM. Thank you.